Release the Kraken. My god, that sound in the intro, it was just like hellish. It, it's such a harsh sound that it really gave me goosebumps the first time I heard that. Um, it was recently found by a few groups of different people within the community. It seems to have been found on Christmas Eve by Battle Rush Gaming in the game files, and it was recently kind of exposed by Jack Frags yesterday when he was sort of fiddling around with the code with one of his mates as well, and they came across the sound. And what it kind of reaffirms is that there is still something to be found on Paracel Storm, but we'll talk more about that later on in the video. What I want to talk about, very briefly, is how Easter eggs are utilised within the Battlefield community. I witnessed uh, an ongoing debate on Twitter yesterday regarding how they should be utilised, and it seemed a little bit far-fetched to me. I, I don't really know why it ever became a problem, because this is just a game at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, but I kind of perceive it different to how other people perceive it, and I kind of wanted to get your opinion on it. Because I've always thought of Easter eggs as a community-driven experiment kind of thing, where developers will put them in the game with the knowledge knowing that they may never get found. Sometimes they will. I mean, in many cases within Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3, we found loads of Easter eggs being part of the community. But a lot of the work is obviously done by a small portion, and then the rest of the community will help expose the rest of it after somebody's done a lot of hard work to get to where they are. And the problem that some people had was that it kind of ruined the surprise when the rest of the community gets involved. And it doesn't become a massive surprise when everybody figures it out. Now that's what I had a problem with, because I completely disagree with that. I think the point of an easter egg is once somebody finds something, yeah that's great, it, it might come as a surprise, it might be somebody who's just worked on it on their own. But all the way through the life cycle of Battlefield 4, people have sort of shown how they've got to these points of finding their easter egg and then asked people for help. And now it comes to this point and you're saying that you should keep it private? I don't really think that that's the way forward. I think if you need help finding something and you want to try and help solve the Easter egg and you want to, I don't know, show that you did it and you want to show off what it actually is, you should probably get all the help you can get to try and do that. If you just sort of hold it close to yourself and try and figure it out on your own and you become stuck and then you don't tell anybody, how is anybody ever meant to find the Easter egg that you so dearly want to find? That's the point of asking for help. Someone else might be able to help you find it. I mean, that's just my opinion. I mean, I'm not having a go at anybody, but I kind of think that if you want to find and expose an Easter egg that is so large, like the ones we've seen in Battlefield 4, that surely they can't just be done by one person. It, it kind of took like a community effort to make sure that we did expose all those Easter eggs. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just rambling, but that's kind of my view that I think it's a community thing. Everyone gets involved. Everyone has a good time. And that's the ultimate goal when it comes to games. Everybody just having a bit of fun. And that's how I think it should be. But anyway, on to something else. Night maps. Myself and a few other YouTubers, streamers and members of the community recently collaborated and set up our own night map event for Battlefield 4. They were all community driven maps and config files and settings. This was nothing official. But we did end up catching the attention of some DICE developers. We managed to capture the attention of a senior lighting artist at DICE LA and we also managed to capture the attention of David Serland who is the lead multiplayer designer over at DICE LA. Now we obviously know that they are working on night maps in the background along with their extended support for Battlefield 4 and it was really cool that whilst we were doing the event the streamers who were who were streaming at the time, I think it was two angry gamers, managed to get their stream up on a big screen at DICE LA, so the developers were actually watching what we were doing, which was really cool. I am happy to announce we're going to be doing a second event with improved and updated config files to try and make it just that little bit more authentic. The first time we did it, it was extremely dark and in some places you couldn't even see your weapon in front of you, so it was very difficult to play sometimes. But uh, Andrew, Shadow6, has worked really hard on some new config files and uh, we're going to be running that very soon. Now, I will try and stream the event, but I can't commit to it because my internet has like usage caps and things like that after the first hour, so I'm not really sure if I'll be able to. 
But if not, I'll definitely be tweeting out about it, who's going to be streaming it. And of course, I'll be making videos in the future on it too, as kind of like an update to the first video I did. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But now, on to the Kraken Easter egg, or the monster Easter egg. Don't really know what it is. I mean, from my hearing, that did sound like a Kraken. But what I'm going to do is play you all of the files in one go, so you can hear all the different sounds that have been extracted from the game files, just so you can get an understanding of what kind of things you're looking for when you're on Paracel Storm. Okay, so having listened to all of those, they are some pretty epic sounds, especially the, the raw one in the middle, that sounds absolutely amazing. There doesn't appear to be a huge amount of trigger points, and there's no real way of knowing how we're supposed to activate it, which kind of leaves it very vague for the end of the video here, but it does, of course, reaffirm that we're still looking for something on Paracel Storm. This was the map that was rumoured to have something on it, for a long, long time. It ended up being on Nantra Strike when we saw the Megalodon, but we thought that was going to be the big thing. But turns out in Dragon's Teeth there were some more clues left. The monster is real on Paracel Storm with the map. And we're still at a point now where we don't know what we're supposed to be finding or how we're supposed to trigger it. There are some coordinates in the game files as well that point to different locations, but those haven't been found yet. And of course they're in-game coordinates, so they need to be translated. But yes, we have ourselves another easter egg hunt on our hands for Battlefield 4. You can't deny that the developers did all they could to try and keep the longevity of the game working and inject some really cool ideas in terms of easter eggs. A lot of people disagree that they should have actually focused on the game itself rather than putting easter eggs in and actually fixing some of the bugs, but hey, I don't really mind because it's something really cool to do. If you're sitting on a server for six hours trying to find something and you end up activating it like the dinosaur roar on road transmission, that was really cool when I managed to activate that with other people in the community. That that was great. And uh, you don't really get a, a different feeling when you unlock an easter egg. It, it's really, really cool. But thank you very much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you leave some comments about the easter egg and <laughs> what you think it might be and any clues that you might have as well because they all go towards the community trying to figure this one out but yes as i say thank you very much for watching if you could leave me a rating that'd be great my name is westy and i'll catch you guys in the next video